Hi students, we are now discussing question number 11 of paper 1 physics J Advanced 2022. Let's have a look at this question. Uh, good question I would say, a question that is going to test the conceptual clarity of students and in some cases of teachers also. Let's have a look at this question. So here is a funnel shaped object given to us in which air is flowing. All right, And air enters the bottom end uh, of this open funnel and uh, it leaves the top end. The area are different. They are given to us as 0.1 and 0.4. The mass flow rate is given to us as 0.8. I'll write the information here, the given information here. The mass flow rate is given to us. Okay, and the density at the time of entering into this uh, funnel, okay, that density is given to us as 0 0.2 kg per meter cube. Okay, and uh, the pressure here, let me call it as P1, the pressure of the air at the time it enters is 600 Pascal. The temperature at the time it enters is given as 300 Kelvin. Okay, now all this information is given to us. G is given to us. Gamma is given to us too. Now, here I would like to comment something, guys. Gamma is given to be 2, which is an impossibility for for an ideal gas okay the, ga the expression of gamma is 1 plus 2 by f and the minimum value of f that we can have is 3 all right now this basically means that uh, we cannot have a value of gamma which is more than uh, 5 by 3 okay gamma has to be less than or equal to 5 by 3 all right so but i guess this information this value has been given to uh, to ensure that the calculations remain easy so i'm going to ignore this fact i'm going to ignore this fact and i'm going to solve this question assuming that gamma is equal to 2 and let's see what is happening here so air enters here then it travels in this funnel okay and uh, it undergoes adiabatic expansion as mentioned in the question and when it leaves from here since it is going an adiabatic expansion we can expect its density to change we can expect its pressure to change its temperature to change all right and we can expect its velocity to change okay so all these things are changing now we what we have been given here is that the temperature temperature is 150 kelvin okay so now we need to check out these options the pressure of the gas at the upper end the velocity of the gas at the lower end and uh, a host of other things so let's see what we can do so i will begin by using the um equation of an adiabatic process so that says that pv raised to power gamma is same as pv raised to power gamma that means p1 v1 raised to power gamma will be equal to pv2 v2 raised to power gamma all right now this same adiabatic uh, uh, process can be described in terms of pressure and temperature also instead of volume we can write uh, temperature by pressure like there will be constants also we can ignore them so we can say that p into t by p raised to power gamma is constant and this will transform to what this will transform to p raised to power 1 minus gamma t raised to power gamma is equals to constant so uh, again if i use the value of gamma then it basically means that t square by p is going to remain as constant okay now this would what what would, what would this mean this would mean that p2 by p1 will be equal to uh, will be equal to t1 square upon t2 square okay so what i can write for p2 what i can write for p2 it will be p1 p1 was 600 pascal okay so it will be 600 pascal into t1 upon t2 square okay now t1 was this much t2 is 150 so the ratio will be uh uh Okay, guys, I think I made a mistake here, a slight mistake here. It should be uh, like instead, uh, it should be like P2 upon P1 is equals to T2 square upon T1 square. Okay, this uh, should be the case. So, P2 will become equal to P1 into T2 by T1 square. So, that is 1 by 2 square. So, that is 150 Pascal. So, we know that the pressure at the top will also be, will also be, uh, will be 150 pascal okay uh, the temperature also had the same numerical value 150 kelvin okay now if we have the pressure and uh, the temperature can we write the density at the top i think we can how uh, pv raised to power gamma equal to constant can also be written as p by rho raised to power gamma equal to constant okay so this basically means 
that P1 upon P2 will be equal to rho1 square upon rho2 square. So if we are trying to calculate rho2, what we should do is root of P2 by P1 into rho1. So P2 was 150 and P1 was 600 and rho1 was uh, 0 0.2 it was 0 0.2 so this will become 0 0.1 kg per meter cube so we now know the density at the top also so we know the density here this is 0 0.1 kg per meter cube we know the temperature here it's 150 kelvin we know the pressure here it was 150 pascal and here the pressure was 600 pascal the temperature was uh, 300 kelvin and the density was 0 0.2 kg per meter square okay now we've been given the velocity here i'm going to use the equation of continuity which says that the mass flow rate can be written as rho 1 a1 v1 which can also be written as rho 2 a2 v2 okay now if you want to calculate the value of v1 what we are going to use uh, alpha is given to us as 0 0.8 so 0 0.8 divided by rho 1 which is 0 0.2 into a1 a1 is how much a1 is 0 0.1 okay so this will become 40 40 meter per second similarly if you want to calculate the value of v2 what we are going to do uh, v2 can be calculated as again mass flow rate divided by rho 2 rho 2 is 0 0.1 into a2 a2 was 0 0.4 i guess let me just confirm here yeah it was 0.4 so into 0.4 so this turns out to be how much no 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 it was in the denominator 0.4 so this turns out to be how much uh, v2 turns out to be uh like 20 20 meter per second okay so we now have the value of v1 and v2 also let's check the options once so this option looks correct 40 and 20 the pressure of the gas at the upper end is so this one is wrong height of the chimney we are yet to figure out and the density of the gas at the upper end again this is wrong so we are only left with option c to check and we are going to check it and option c is the trickiest of all so guys understand this many of the teachers gave answer as option c like they claim that c will be the answer and we get answer c if we apply bernoulli theorem but in the wrong manner here in this case what is happening is that the density of the fluid is changing so we have to keep that into mind that density is changing it's not constant and secondly there is an adiabatic expansion going uh, on for the gas that means that some energy will get uh, see uh, while deriving Bernoulli equation what we use is that the work done by the external agent and the work done by the gravity okay both these two things are going to get combined to change the kinetic energy of the fluid we do not consider any amount of energy that is going into the liquid in the form of internal energy all right so that factor is missing here which basically means that the ordinary form of Bernoulli equation that you know that will not be sufficient to solve this question like it will need another form a more advanced version uh, which we can say is not part of your syllabus okay but what you could have done is that you could have applied the normal Bernoulli equation the way you know how to apply the Bernoulli equation that would have given you a value of 590 meter and then since you are getting 590 meter by applying a wrong concept then you could have argued that the, this prop, this value in all likelihood this value should be incorrect okay so uh, let me first solve the question by applying the proper version of the Bernoulli equation. Let me tell you what that version is. Okay, for that we'll have to discuss uh, the derivation of the Bernoulli equation. How we de de how we derive this equation? We say that let's consider a, a, a tube of flow in which the height is changing, and let's consider this section only. So this entire section is always filled with liquid, and in the next dt duration, some amount of liquid will enter here. Okay, let's say with a speed v1 and an equal amount of liquid will come out from here. Okay, let's say with a speed of v2. Okay, so this let's say is dm mass. This is also dm mass. Okay, so whatever fluid was present in this region, that fluid must have exerted a pressure, uh, a pressure p1, some pressure, let me call uh, uh, that as p1 in this direction. And because of this pressure, uh, this fluid uh, got displaced like the pressure was exerting towards right it displacement happened towards right so work done at this end on the liquid would be p1 into um, uh, p1 into v1 dt into a1 okay where a is the area of this place and here what would have happened again the liquid which is present ahead of this this volume that liquid would be exerting a pressure p2 in this direction so 
uh, here negative work would happen and that will be written as minus P2 into A2 into V2 dt. So this is the work done by the surrounding fluid. Uh, then we are going to write the work done by the gravity. Now work done by the gravity can be written as mass of the liquid and G into H initial minus H final. So H1 minus H2 and all this should be equal to the change in kinetic energy. Okay, so this is the usual form. Okay, like uh, now I'm going to write uh, dm into v2 square minus dm into v1 square upon 2. This is the usual form. What we are missing here, let me try to explain that to you. Let's say, let's say we would have given some amount of energy to the fluid in the form of heat also. Okay, then this would have become the total amount of energy received by the fluid. Like we are giving energy in the form of work. Okay, we are giving energy in the form of work done by gravity and then we are also providing energy in the form of heat. So that should appear here. All right, and all these things will amount to two kinds of changes. Uh, all this energy that we are giving to the liquid can lead to an increase in kinetic energy or it can lead to an increase in the internal energy of the liquid. So this becomes the uh, version of the Bernoulli theorem where we are also taking into account the heat transfer, the heat changes uh, that the fluid can undergo. All right, now... Uh, if you see this equation carefully, this A1 V1 dt, okay, this can be written as uh, dm upon rho. How, why am I saying so? You will just recognize in a short while. See this. We write dm by dt as uh, rho 1 A1 V1. Okay, so A1 V1 dt can be written as dm by rho 1. So it will become P1 into dm upon rho 1. Minus. Similarly, here we are going to write P2 into dm upon rho 2 and then I am going to write dm into G into H1 minus H2. Okay, then plus Q is equals to dm into V2 square minus V1 square upon 2 plus uh, uh, delta U or du. Okay, let me write it as du. Okay, now what will happen? We can cancel out dm from all the terms. And this is what we are going to get. Like we are going to get uh, another version of Bernoulli equation and that is uh, P1 by rho 1 uh, minus P2 by rho 2 uh, plus, plus G into H1 minus H2 okay, plus heat supplied is equals to is equals to uh, v2 square minus v1 square by 2 and then du by dm okay so now let's try to put values here in this particular question what has happened p1 was 600 pascal rho1 was 0 0.2 p2 was 150 pascal rho2 was 0 0.1 g was 10 h1 minus h2 will become 0 minus h heat supplied is 0 because the gas underwent an adiabatic process and then we will have v2 square so 20 square minus 40 square by 2 plus du by dm the increase in internal energy uh, so let's do the calculation for one second like if i divide the numerator and the denominator by dt then now uh, we are writing the uh, change in internal energy per unit time okay divided by the mass flow rate so we will have to calculate this part we will have to calculate this part so let's put this equation on hold and let's do this calculation so in one second in one second alpha kg of liquid we can say enters from one end and leaves from the other end okay so if i consider this amount of liquid as my system so this amount of liquid is undergoing an adiabatic expansion. So Q will be zero, but uh, we know that delta U will be equal to uh, will be equal to minus W, where W is the work done uh, by the gas. Delta U is the work done by the gas, which will be written as minus of P1 V1 minus P2 V2 divided by gamma minus one. Okay, so this is going to become what? This is going to become uh, minus of P1. P1 was 600. Now V1. Now what do I write for V1? So I will say that the amount of, the, like in one second, this much kg entered the tube. So 
we are talking about alpha kg so how much alpha kg is going to occupy so that we can write by density upon um, uh, sorry mass upon density so mass would be alpha that is 0 0.8 uh, 0 0.8 and we divide it with the density that was 0 0.2 Similarly, P2 will be 150 and then V2 can be written as again mass flow rate divided by the new density which is 0.1 divided by gamma minus 1 which is 2 minus 1. So this number turns out to be minus of this will become 600 into 4 that is 2400 minus and 150 into 8. So 150 into 8 becomes how much? Uh, 1200 okay divided by one so this becomes minus 1200 so if i put this value of minus 1200 here now i need to finish the calculation and finishing the calculation will give me answer let's do that so i'm now solving this equation here i'll try to do the calculation a bit quickly now so this will become 3000 okay and this will become 1500 okay and i'll take this damage on the other side uh, this will become what 1600 minus 400 so that's 1200 by 2 so 600 so plus 600 and uh, we'll bring this plus 1200 this side so all this will be equal to 10 h so from here we get h is equals to guys i just realized i, I, I committed a mistake i wrote uh, du by dt here du by dt here we were to divide it with dm by dt also so we will divide this entire term by 0.8 so this will get cancelled out which means uh, uh, like i calculated the work but i forgot to divide it by, d by dm by dt so if i do that okay if i do that so we will end up with how much we will end up with minus 1500 okay so here we will have uh, 1500 okay so uh, now these two get cancelled and from here we get h as 360 meter so this is the correct value of h by applying the correct version of Bernoulli mind you guys uh, when this question came many of the teachers in many of the institutes claimed that Bernoulli equation is not applicable now I will just add something to this statement that Bernoulli equation in the form in, uh, in which you studied in, in grade 11 is not applicable but actually it's a more encompassing equation containing some more terms such as uh, the term due to heat and uh, the term due to rotational kinetic energy also but we do not consider that at grade 11. Okay, here in this question they have included a term involving heat also uh, and therefore we need to modify Bernoulli equation and then we should apply it. All right, guys, with that, I hope you enjoyed the solution. I hope you liked it and you understood it, guys. Uh, take care. Bye-bye.